Hi, I'm David Silverman. I direct animation, mostly for The Simpsons. I've been involved with The Simpsons since it began, uh, now 31 years ago on The Tracy Ullman Show. First as animator, then director, producer, director. And um, I'm also working on a feature film, not of The Simpsons, uh, for a company called Wink Animation, uh, and uh, financed by China Lion. And uh, I really should be there working, but here I am in St Stuttgart. <laughs> I can say that it involves um, uh, hitherto unseen animals around the Galapagos Island. Uh, Charles Darwin will probably make an appearance. Um, uh, I don't know. I probably won't say much more. <laughs> I'll just have to look at the press and see what already, already has been leaked out. We will be basically um, producing it all in North America. Los Angeles will be the center where we will be doing uh, the boarding and, and the writing. It's written by three Simpson writers, Rob Lezebnik, Joel H. Cohen, and uh, uh, John Frink. And uh, my co-director is Raymond Percy. And um, that part will be done all in, in Los Angeles. The animation will be done by um, uh, CineSight in Montreal, so, which is nice. So it's uh, relatively local <laughs> in our global animation world these days. So uh, um, and actually, they, they have an animation director who will be working with us in Los Angeles, and we'll have remote uh, hookups to them. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's how it's going to be handled. Uh, not really, not at this point. Whether you're doing a traditionally animated film or a CG film in the story stage, it's all the same, you know, your approach in terms of how you want to uh, tell the story. It's back to storyboarding. Um, we are doing some things different, I guess, in the sense that we're testing out in CG right away because we have some unusual things, unusual challenges, and we want to see them right, right off the bat. So. Um, but I don't know, it's, um, I, I did work on Monsters, Inc. after all, so it's not completely new to me. Well, currently, I'm consulting producer on The Simpsons, and I, it, it could be various things. Uh, oftentimes, there are special projects that come up that uh, Jim, Brook, Jim Brooks wants me to handle in terms of directing. Uh, there are various things that come up with uh, different shows. I try to be involved in all the uh, storyboard uh, meetings with the storyboard artists when they present their uh, story reels for the first time to the director and Mike Anderson, supervising director. Uh, and we go over that, and that's usually an all-day process on a Monday. I don't think I'm missing one of those. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and it can, you know, depends. I mean, like, like a couple of years ago, uh, I directed an episode uh, that they wanted me very much to do. Uh, I am not, I'm sort of maybe co-directing an episode that Rob Oliver is directing. I'm just getting more involved in it because it has some very sort of specific uh, uh, acting that I think Jim Brooks wants me to keep an eye on, although I trust Rob completely, so. Uh, but I will, you know, involve myself in that way. I just wrote an episode, well, when I say just, it was last year, it was just on, <laughs> um, that with, uh, with Brian Kelly, so, uh, my involvement can apparently <laughs> run the gamut. Well, for me, I approach everything pretty much the same way. I just did, um, in the show that I wrote, uh, this episode where they go to uh, New Orleans, there's a, scene, a sequence where Homer basically eats up everything in sight. And it's one cut after another as Homer names a different dish in a different place. And when I approached it from a boarding point of view, it's, it's felt the same. I just sort of went for it. I often just go off the top of my head and just start drawing and see what happens. So, no, I kind of felt like I was doing, I was back doing uh, the Tracy Ullman show, you know. Uh, so, uh, so a lot of those things sort of feel the same to me. That, that, that has, the, the way we approach it from a technical point of view really hasn't changed much from the way we approach it from a directing point of view, except the fact that we have more latitude and more freedom, if you will, to do some more elaborate uh, camera work or at least do things that are more emotional. Like when we push into somebody, I always say to everybody, let's multiplane it. Don't make it look like you're zooming in, make it look like the camera's actually moving in by separating the background or separating the background in several elements, depending where you're located. Uh, so those are the main things. We do more, shall we say, multiplane effects, uh, and we can do more with the color. But otherwise, it largely feels the same as far as you know the production. 
Well, we're not, uh, nothing's happening uh, yet at the moment. We're not doing anything. I mean, it's always a possibility. I think there's an interest to do another feature at some point. Part of it might be that <laughs> every time people think, let's do another feature, they realize, remember how hard that was doing the feature and the show at the same time? But, uh, you know, I don't think that's going to stop it if, if, if uh, there's a really good idea uh, that, uh, you know, that Matt Groening and Jim Brooks, they want to do. Uh, it's possible, but as I say, nothing's happened yet. Every now and then something rumbles, but nothing has stuck. <laughs> we haven't stuck a landing on getting, getting in production on that. As far as the shorts, uh, I don't know. There, the, the, that was like an interesting idea, that, but nothing has come up. I haven't seen anything or even heard any talk about another short. I guess it's inevitable. We just was like, we were trying uh, uh, at the time, which was kind of great because it was kind of uncharted territory on the type of humor that was sort of permissible or expect. You know, it's not even permissible because it existed. I guess it was unexpected, especially from an, anima an animated show. And I think that's possibly what it was. But <laughs> I mean, every time this happens, I just imagine everybody transforming into Margaret Dumont and going, oh, my Groucho, we can't have this kind of humor on the air. It's terrible. Think of the children. You know, it's like, OK, <laughs> it's like, that's not, never mind that. Pick a card, you know, <laughs> but in some ways I liken it to that. I mean, I, I think there was a point you know, even the Marx Brothers were considered a, probably controversial in their day, you know, but uh, because they actually thumb their nose at authority. But comedy is always thumbing its nose at authority. Or the comedy only works because you thumb your nose at something. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't really work. Well, it's hard to say. I don't, I don't analyze it too much. One thing I, I think is very useful is the ability or, or in, engaging people so they do you know, their best work or they want to do their best work and they'll, they'll do things that surprise you. So engaging people and delegating to people I think is very important. Um, I used to, well, I think I, I did it more out of necessity or maybe I thought I had to, it's hard to say. In the early days of directing The Simpsons, I was doing a lot more you know, on hands of things, the doing this, doing anima animating this myself and doing this myself and so, and so on and so on. But, um, I think what happened, the thing that really happened is that we getting the people that we were working with get, were getting more skilled or more skilled people were uh, becoming involved in the project. And uh, I was able to rel relinquish <laughs> that idea and, as I say, delegate. And, you know, as I say, you empower your talents and they're going to do great and hopefully surprising work for you. And it'll just make your life easier. At least my perspective on how the animation of the Tracy Dolan show uh, came to be, and then when we transitioned from uh, doing the shorts to doing the series, and just I'm just going to focus on that. I mean, I only have an hour anyhow. Well, I, I, as best as I can uh, sketch it out, I think it's interesting. I think, think I think they might be interested in just kind of the history of how even the Tracy Dolan show came about, and the connection with Jim Brooks, because Jim Brooks was sort of like in many ways. Uh, became the engine for the Tracy Ullman show to, to, to happen on Fox. And then his connection, uh, I think independently with Matt Groening, not, I don't think it was, I, I, from my perspective, I don't think it was like uh, brought about that, oh, I'm doing the Tracy Ullman show and I want this guy to do this. But I think he had met Matt previously and tried to think of one way to get in, in you know, do something with his work. Uh, so I think those, those things are interesting to point out. You can kind of pull all the lines, a lot of different lines in different direction, getting the talent together that made the show, which I think is interesting from also the writing side and the animation side, and how everybody came together, uh, you know, and how the alchemy happened on this one program.